The Nigeria police laid siege to offices of news platform Sahara Reporters and Rights Group Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, CDHR, here in Lagos. The police claim deployment of their officers to the area was to serve as protection and ensure law and order are maintained. And literally, in the voice of MC Hammer, you can't touch this. <laughs> Adam Sashomale has been advised to leave Governor Basaki alone, or he will lose the South South votes. Which is pretty interesting. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Policemen laid siege at the office of the committee for the defense of human rights in Adeni Jones, Ikeja area of Lagos State today. Now, the officers arrived on the premises in the morning to stop a planned protest against the detention of Omoyele Shuri, convener of the hashtag Revolution Now movement. Now, the protest, which was scheduled for 10 a.m., could not take off as the officers mounted guard uh, in front of the office. Well, I'm being joined by Barrister Emeka Mwadiuke. And, uh, of course, uh, this issue makes people begin to wonder, are protest in Nigeria now a no-no? Uh, it's, it's quite, I was quite uh, surprised also when uh, in the morning we were viewing some uh, stations and we were getting um, these visuals on the siege being laid on, the, on those property. Um, and, you know, you can't but want to begin to think whether we are back in those the days of the jackboots and uh, the military era and all that. So it was quite, uh, for me, it was quite disturbing uh, because, again, I was thinking Sahara Reporters, the publisher is already in detention. And um, the court case is ongoing and all that. Uh, and again, don't equally forget that there were, there was a protest, you know, at the National Stadium, and you saw all the crises, how people were being hounded and all that. And uh, those visuals, again, uh, people were not quite uh, pleased with uh, what happened uh, that day. So, and then you begin to now think, is this how uh, we should just uh, continue, you know? Um, is there no longer freedom of uh, speech, you know? Is there no longer freedom of assembly and uh, association and all that? So it was, it was quite disturbing, really, to see those, uh, those visuals and uh, because um, uh, we had specifically one of the employees who was um, who was interviewed, and he basically said uh, they were essentially under false imprisonment. So let's go to what the police said, because uh, the police has re re released a report okay. as to why they went to, you know, lay siege on those places. In their words, they were not laying siege. They said that they were there to provide security and ensure that there is no breach of peace. Okay. So if a group decides that we feel it's their opinion that the government is illegally keeping somebody who we think is not guilty of a certain crime that they're saying that he's accused of. Yes. Have they no right to protest without feeling that it's going to become violence or even stopping them from having the protest? Because as far as we're concerned, that protest was botched. It didn't even get to happen. Yes. Um, I, I actually don't have the details as regards uh, that protest and how it was planned. Um, I think it was even when I heard those, uh, I saw those visuals, I even became aware that there was uh, supposed to be a protest. So that said, um, the courts have always held that the right to protest cannot be impeached by anybody. It's uh, an inalienable right that belongs to Nigerians. So if you feel uh, aggrieved by whatever anybody is doing, including the government, you have a right to protest. I think what usually happens is uh, probably if you think that you cannot control the crowd that you have, that you want to use for your pro protest, you can approach the police and request for protection 
or some, uh, you know, some kind of protection or, some, or thereabout. But aside from that, if you feel that, for instance, the workers here, they just want to, you know, go along the street in a form of protest over whatever, maybe power outage, constant power, or whatever, they can easily gather themselves. You can manage the crowd, do a 10, 10 meter or 100 meter walk, come back to your office. That's a protest. So protest doesn't have to be violent. And you don't need the police or whoever for that. So under that circumstance, but I... The, but the Nigerian mm. police always holds this um, view that you must come to them for permission. Exactly. But I ask you now as a lawyer, is there any provision in the Constitution that says you must go get a p permission or a permit from the police Absolute, to go have a protest? Not. But absolutely the police keeps, re keeps saying that and we never hear the NBA come out to challenge them. Or any lawyer whatsoever? Uh, definitely lawyers uh, have uh, challenged it. I wouldn't know whether uh, the NBA as a body has spoken specifically to that issue. But um, it's tried that you, you don't need a uh, police permit. The, the court has ruled on that. And um, just like you hinted, yeah, I was even uh, listening to the police officer who more or less aborted the, the protest during the, the first uh, you know, uh, revolution now protest at the National Assembly, saying that we did that because uh, they didn't seek a police permit. I said, where's this guy coming from? He should have uh, read the position of the courts on this and be properly guided. So obviously, um, it's a non-issue. Let's talk about the CDHR. This is a, a committee for defense of human rights. So obviously, this is a civil, civil society organization, non-governmental. Yes. And their core values is to defend human rights. Now, the police has been laying siege, or literally, in front of their offices as at this morning, not letting people in or out of that premises. And the question is, is this not an infringement of the human rights that these CDHR are fighting for? That these same people are being asked not to go out on a protest. Again, some months ago, if not two months now, we had a group of people who came to say that Amnesty International should leave the country. They were protesting. We didn't see police officers there. There was nobody stopping them. So is it that civil society, the powers that they have, as it is in the Constitution and the UN Charter, is it somewhat being stifled in Nigeria? And what could be responsible for this? Yes, uh, as regards CDHR, CDHR has been uh, around for quite uh, some time. Recall the days of uh, Bekor and Sankuti and, uh, and all that, in the heyday of uh, even military dictatorship. Well, you know, there we are in the front lines and uh, they've been in the trenches for long. So. This is not even uh, an unknown quantity of uh, a civil rights uh, group to say that you don't know what they belong, uh, where they belong, and what their values are. So, so why would the police think that the CDHR of all people? I mean, let's forget about Sahara TV mm -hmm. or Sahara reporters, but this is a known human rights organization. Why would they want to ensure that there is no breach of peace when these are people who are? there to def defend human rights and they've been known to be peaceful the whole time. Should precedents not play a part in? Yes, again, I, I suspect that um, what happened probably there was, um, the, probably CDHR was to be the arrowhead of the, uh, of the revolution now uh, protest. Probably they would have uh, been the ones to anchor the protest. So I see um, uh, a game plan of basically to go out and squelch the uh, squelch the uh, the protest by by all means. So whoever is to uh, propagate the protest, whether it's CDHR, whether it's uh, staff of uh, Sahara reporters, just uh, keep them down. And um, of course, you are right to say that yes, it was uh, forced imprisonment because. Uh, again, I recall that the staff said that they were not shown any um, warrant of arrest, no such warrant. So on what basis were you even there? So it, it's uh, very sad. And, but what uh, does that say about our rights in this country, especially if we say we are operating under a democratic system of government? Yes. 
and we the people, the only way we can ask for responsibility or government to, to, to make government answerable is by protesting, labor protest. I mean, there's protests that are allowed anywhere in the world, except maybe if you live in North Korea. So why, what is that, I mean, how does this paint us to the rest of the world? Yeah, obviously, um, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't give us. It doesn't look good. Uh, we don't look good globally now, and uh, in, in the in the human rights space, uh, you know, because um, these are basically for me. These are very basic things. You know, the right to protest, the right to assert your rights, the rights of association, movement, you know, and all that. So, but when these rights are being trampled on and again under a civil rule it says a lot about the quality of our democracy uh, so people may begin to think that we we are definitely not there yet uh, are we making effort towards even uh, the, the 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 global benchmark um with all these um when you issues? say we when you say are we yes the people are trying to I'm guessing that the people are trying to get government's attention. Yes. So it is not necessarily we, is it? No, it's not. So it's the government, of course. Good. So I think we need to make that distinction. Draw, that yeah, distinction. Definitely, yes. Definitely. Of course, I'm talking about the government. The government has to open the space, allow people to, to protest when it's necessary. At any rate, everyone knows that you know the, uh, the, 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 the economy is biting hard. A lot of uh, dissatisfaction in the country, and uh, and uh, and so many other um, you know um, um, issues that are on the table. So if people want to protest about this, and um, you kind of uh, keeping them down, uh, it's it's not uh, it's not good at all. And uh, I think it's it's time government pulls back from all these uh, dictatorial and uh, anti-democratic uh, tendencies, and uh, really. Um, allow uh, f the space, free space, for democracy to thrive. We keep saying we, government should, government should. I know that government should do certain things. We're hoping and believing that they should be smart enough to do certain things, knowing that this is what the responsibility is as a government. But if we see these biases or we see this, you know, this might or this power wielded only in favor of the government and then the people are left, you know, in limbo, I'm wondering how long can we go on like this, especially when we're very quick to append our signatures to all kinds of things on the international scene and making ourselves look good. But when you come home, we're really not practicing the freedom of the people in this country. So uh, how long can we keep doing this? Uh, at the end of the day, it's um, one step at a time. Uh, we were coming from an era of uh, military dictatorship. We uh, moved to the democratic rule, so-called. Um, then it's a nascent democracy. That's nascent, what we call it. It's still growing. Very well, very well. And um, there have been comparisons as regards regimes, whether this regime was better in, you know, observing democratic tendencies than the other, you know, and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's a journey. For me, it's a journey. So the people have a role to play uh, because you have to assert your rights. Sometimes these rights are not given. But again, more fundamentally, because much of the work has to be done again by the government, because it's also about what's the body language of Mr. President or whoever is in charge. You know, so. Some of these uh, uh, law enforcement agencies take their, take their clues from that, and then that determines what they do. If they know that you are not likely to take lightly with uh, anybody trampling on the, the rights of the citizens, obviously they will pull back. So a lot depends on the government to show that they really are out to respect the rights of the citizens. And then, of course, the citizens on their own, because at the end of the day, if maybe a, a, a policeman or an army man is, uh, you know, talking gun here and there, you're likely to pull back. So it's very fundamental that you know the security agencies respect 
the rights of the citizens, the government, you know, should uh, show its hand that it's actually keen to respect the rights of the citizens. And I think um, if that signal is sent, instead of all these uh, uh, issues that we have every day, probably we'll be getting somewhere. If Sahara reporters or the CDHR were to take this to court or take the government, let's say take the police, because the, the police might say they acted on their own, the government might feign ignorance that they know nothing about this. But if they were to go to court on the grounds of infringement of human rights or dis, uh, somewhat disturbing their business hours of the day, do they have a case? I think they have a strong case. They have a very strong case to the extent that you, you, it's probably it's even a private property anyway. You, uh, you, you, you approach a private property, you don't have uh, a warrant, uh, a search warrant, you don't have a warrant of arrest, you've not shown it to anybody. You come uh, 6 o'clock in the morning and you're banging the door and saying, come out, I want to arrest you or whatever. Well, who does that? So obviously they have a very strong case. Um, they have a very strong case on, on several grounds. And um, I think also that by the time we begin to even uh, uh, ventilate some of these uh, rights and in court, mm. uh, I think probably we'll be able to rein in some so of So you're saying these, the CDHR uh, and Sahara reporters should go to court on this Definitely, matter. definitely. And you think that they, they might have the they upper hand? They definitely have a strong case. They have a strong case. Interesting. And uh, I hope they, they get uh, you know massive damages against the gov against the government and the, the police also, and uh, you know probably attach their 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 levy execution attached the police service commission you know, by time. At any rate, I even know that even among the police, they are quite reluctant to do some of certain things now because. By the time you, if, if it's an individual police officer, the, the police service commission tends to even, uh, by the time you attach their, 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 their money, they, they, they tend to be worried. So why not hit them with a heavy uh, damage? <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll be getting somewhere. All right, well, we'll take a short break. Thank you very much, Barista Emeka Mwadi, okay, for speaking with us. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about the rift between the Adair State Governor and the party uh, chairman. Uh, national Chairman uh, Adams of Shumley. It's going to be an interesting one. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.